A recent survey of 1,000 married men revealed that 56% of them have been unfaithful at least once, form a 95% confidence interval to estimate the true proportion of married men who are unfaithful. Okay, so in this problem, the first thing I want to do is identify what technique to use. It says form a 95% confidence interval to estimate the true proportion of married men who are unfaithful. So at this point, it's a confidence interval, we know that, but it's not for the mean, it's for the proportion. So we're going to apply a four-step procedure that's similar to the one we used when we were working with the mean. All right, first step is to record the information or record the data, right? Okay, and what we're going to do now is keep a list of everything we have in the problem that's helpful. So generally speaking, for these problems, we're going to need an N. You will need a p hat. p hat is a sample proportion, remember, and it's given as either x over n or it's given as a percent. So if it's given as x over n, it'll tell you the number of people who behaved a certain way or had a certain trait divided by the total number of subjects involved in the study. If it's going to be just a decimal up front, it'll just tell you the decimal that has the trait that you're looking for. From there, we can get something called q hat, and q hat is just 1 minus p hat. And then, of course, lastly, we need the confidence level, we need alpha, and from there we can get alpha divided by 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, determine n for this problem. This is a re recent survey of 1,000 married men, right? So 1,000 married men is your sample. So that's going to be n is equal to 1,000. All right, from there it says that 56% of them have been unfaithful at least once. So this is going to be the proportion of people who are, or married men, I should say, who are unfaithful. So we're going to go ahead and call that 0.56. That's the p hat, the sample proportion. Out of these 1,000, 56 of them. So we weren't given the x value here. We could determine it if we wanted it, but we don't want it. We don't know how many, um, well actually we do, of course, by doing the multiplication. It's going to be 560 out of the 1,000 that cheated, basically, but that would be your x and n is the total 1,000. But just as a decimal given to us already, we have 0.56, so we don't need to do anything more. We don't need to know x. If we are given x, we have to use it to come up with p hat, but we don't need x if we're not given it. All right, and then q hat is gonna be one minus p hat. p hat is this decimal above, so one minus that is gonna be the remaining 44% that did not cheat. So 0.44, if you do one minus 0.56, you get 0.44. Okay, last thing we want to fill in here then from the problem itself is 95% confidence level. And we will derive the others from that. So if we have 95% confidence, remember we have 5% alpha, they must add up to 100, so that's the relationship there. And then half of that is 0 0.025. Okay, now the next step, just like in our previous confidence interval problems, is going to be to get a table value. The sample size is quite large here. We're going to use Z alpha divided by 2. Okay, so to get z alpha divided by 2, if it's one of the nice values that we can find on the t-table, we will use the t-table. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look up alpha divided by 2 under infinity on the table, right? So on the t-table, we have that little row of z values where it says infinity. So we're going to look up this 0 0.025 on that table under the infinity row. So let's go do that now and get the table value we need to solve this problem. Okay, so now we're looking up 0 0.025, and we're going all the way down to the bottom to get to the z value. So let's go all the way straight to the bottom until we see the infinity symbol, and then we know we're looking at the z value, and then we see the answer is 1.960. Okay, so the table value we found to be 1.960. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and do step three, which is our margin of error step. Okay, so since this is a confidence interval for proportion, we have a different formula for the margin of error. The formula is z alpha divided by 2, and then it's going to be the square root of p hat times q hat divided by n. All of that's under the square root symbol. So what we're going to do is plug in the z, that's 1.96 times the square root of p hat, we said was 0.56, that'll be times the q hat of 0.44, and then all of that's divided by 1,000. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So I have 1.96 times the square root of 
0.56 times 0.44 divided by 1,000. Okay, so when we do that, we get this number here for the error. 0 0.030766 dot dot dot, right? Goes on and on from there. I'm going to go ahead and store that in our calculator, and then I will use it in my next step. Now, the next step is the easiest one. It's the one where we simply do the addition and subtraction of the error to and from our point estimator. So our point estimator in this problem is no longer x bar. It's now p hat, our sample proportion. We'll subtract the error from that, and then we'll take p hat, and we will add the error. And that will finish the problem for us. Okay, so in this case, our p hat is 0.56. So we're going to take away that error that we had, and then we're going to add that same amount to it. And when we're done, we end up with this interval. Remember, our original p hat was 0.56. Our limits become 0.529 and 0.591. All right, so we have the interval. Now let's write the statement out that goes with the interval. We're going to say that we are 95% confident that the true proportion of married men who are unfaithful is between And the numbers we came up with are 52.9% and 59.1%. Okay, so essentially at this point, we're certainly saying that it's a majority, right? It's a majority of married men who have been unfaithful at least once to their spouses. This interval um, conveys that information because the minimum number is still over 50%.